you know, despite the Playing Fields Advisory Board warning against it, Michael Gove has given permission for Wandsworth Council to sell off playing fields and sports facilities at Elliott School in Putney. We're here for the final council meeting to persuade them of the value of saving Elliott School and its playing fields. We did a lot of sport, we played tennis, football, we did athletics, long jump, I remember doing that at the school. There was just a sense of openness and space. Children need space to play, need space to go before school, lunchtime, after school. They need to be involved in sport and activity. Walking some distance to playing fields is not an answer. No one seems to think that if you go to a state school in London you deserve having space to play and run around. There are alternatives to selling these playing fields. They could raise council tax. Wandsworth Council could use some of their significant cash reserves. The council have not even attempted to apply for the emergency fund, the Priority Schools Building Programme, which was set up in the wake of cuts to the Building Schools for the Future programme. The school was built in the 1950s and has suffered decades of neglect by Wandsworth Council. Labour had planned to invest 40 million under building schools for the future, but that was cut by the coalition government in 2010. Now, Wandsworth Council say the only way to fund the refurbishment is to sell the land. They say that if this does not happen, the school will have to close. So the plan is to sell off 41% of the school site. Under the proposals, Elliot would lose six tennis courts, a large football pitch, athletics facilities, nature garden, its historic grade two listed sports hall. This sports hall has a sprung floor, so it's perfect for dance and gymnastics. If the land sale goes ahead, the loss to the school will be massive. This plan was developed by the council with their architects and shows over 100 new houses on the site of the old sports facilities and playgrounds. The only sports provision provided after the sale are three small multi-purpose sports courts. This amounts to a reduction of outdoor sports facilities of two-thirds of the existing provision. It's simply unbelievable that in the Olympic year, and any year for that matter, the council think it's okay to deny the children that go to the school on this site from those basic sports facilities. They want a good quality second school and frankly, if you don't mind getting out of my face, I'd appreciate that. Why are you worried about I'll tell you why, because actually, your people who I don't believe represent my local community, well, you, you need a good wrong. secondary school. You are wrong. You shout me down the minute you ask me a question. The teachers are in favour of this, the governors are in favour of investment, the head teachers are in favour of investment, the children are in favour of investment. The public aren't though, Justine. The public are not in favour of the way you're doing it. My community is, and you aren't representing my community, you're, I am. Yeah. So where's your community? You are a bully and you're very rude. No, How many people are here son. supporting no, no, your no. plans, Justine? Uh, How many people here are supporting your plans? Well, if I can get word in edgeways. Well, okay, answer me that question then. I think that this building should be refurbished, right. but I think it should be funded in the correct way and not stripping the asset for the kids. Well, I, I think Clearly, which you don't agree with that, because this clearly strips the asset for the school. I, I don't agree. I think... I think well, we're there's a 350% reduction in sports facilities, get, Justine. The sports facilities will be way better. They will be reduced in area by 350%. Is that acceptable? <laughs> we're just arriving in the car park of Tutingbet Lido, which is uh, the final destination of the Olympic coach. We're hoping there'll be uh, stars from Team GB. It's a great opportunity to raise public awareness and galvanise support against Wandsworth Council and Michael Gove's shameful plan. Bit of a mess, eh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is just one I, I, do, I, know, I do know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, the site is absolutely out of this world. Did Which is the area that's going to get it's going to get lost. The whole of that area. So it's all of that. So it's six multi-purpose sports pitches, an athletics field, which is you know that yeah. was a pioneering model in 1950. In fact, even today, not many schools have athletics. Field. And a large football park. So all of that 
the scrap. And it's okay. all going to be go and, what, and replaced by school buildings? By housing. Or by yeah. Yeah. housing, yeah. I thought it was right. So it, this, this was earmarked under the building schools for the future yeah. for refurbishment, yeah. and yeah. the yeah. yeah. scrap yeah. yeah. The other issue, it seems, is that there are other sources of funding which ones with council have chosen not to pursue. Absolutely. Wandsworth is a good council which gets many things right, but it has got the future of Elliot fundamentally and astoundingly wrong. To answer Mr Leach's point about what the point of a consultation was, where 96% of respondents said they were against the say of the land and yet were going ahead with it anyway. It's not a referendum. So why do a consultation? It's not a very big society, Councillor Grimm, still, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and there are options uh, that could preserve the land uh, and actually ideally redevelop it, obviously not leave it as a sloping car park, as Councillor Maxwell Scott puts it. Uh, once that land is sold and developed on, it is playing field space that is lost forever.